If I made a video for every i5-2400 GTX 670 build I put together in the past year, I would never have any time to jerk off. As such, as many of you might know, I try to keep my builds to interesting, special, or educational kinds of builds that I think will make interesting talking points or teach you a little something something. And that's precisely what we're going to do today. The question I pose for you today is, can you save money by buying current generation parts second hand? And, if you can, how much can you save? Let's fucking find out! Here I am, working on an ottoman. All right, first things first, I think that view is a little bit better. We have the case, my favorite case of all, the Rosewill SRM01 I picked up for 23 Canadian dollars on Amazon with free prime shipping, motherfucker. Next up, we have the motherboard, RAM, and CPU combo as seen right here. For those of you who cannot see it from back here, it is an Asus uh, H170M-ED3 motherboard with eight gigs of RAM and an i3-6100. Now you might be saying to yourself, well, Jeff, Skylake is not current gen anymore. Now it's KB Lake. For those of you not in the know, KB Lake and Skylake are architecturally identical. There is no difference between them aside from the yields that process maturation will grant. And that is precisely why KB Lake chips are clocked just a bit higher, despite the fact that they are the same fucking thing. Now, why did I choose this processor in particular? Well, as you may know, the G4560 is all the hot shit these days. It's a dual core with hyper-threading that you can pick up here in Canada for about $82 before shipping and taxes. But this i3-6100, I got for $65. as tax and ship and everything in. And and considering I got it from a guy in Kijiji, that makes sense. I just went to his house and got it. Now, the motherboard, interestingly enough, is a regret sale that I got off Kijiji. So somebody bought this motherboard thinking, yeah, Skylake time. And then they realized, no, it's a DDR3 motherboard. I got it off a guy who was clearly looking to offload it for as much money as he possibly could. And I ended up paying 75 bucks for it, which is a little bit much when you think about the application that this is going to be serving. I probably could have gotten an H110 board for tax and shipping in around the same price, but it does have several features that make it sort of justifiable, I think. Mainly the fact that it's got an M.2 slot there. It's got four DIMM slots, so I paid about the same amount of money retail that you would for an H110 board, and I got an H170 board with DDR3 support. And speaking of the DIMM slots, with regards to the RAM, this is a single 8GB stick of DDR3-1600 from Corsair. Now, of course, you should not be using DDR3 with Skylake CPUs. They only take DDR3L because the memory controller is not certified to operate any higher than 1.35 volts, which is why well, as soon as I booted this fucker up, I logged into the BIOS and reduced the voltage down to 1.3. Most DDR3 sticks will operate at 1.35 if you drop them down, although you might have to underclock them a bit. I didn't have to in this case, which is good, but it's important to know that every time you clear the CMOS or every time you suspect there might have been a hard reset of your motherboard, you must log back into the BIOS and you must change it to preserve the life of your CPU. Not a problem operating for just a few minutes, but prolonged use at those voltages, Intel says, is going to be bad news for the CPU. Anyway, 20 bucks for the RAM. And next up we have the graphics card, which is a GTX 1050, two gigabytes of VRAM, all kinds of power for the small area of footprint that it takes up. Interesting story around this card. So, I was going to originally buy an RX 460 for $90 off of someone who was selling something that they won in a contest, supposedly. It may have been stolen, who the hell knows. $90 is a little bit more than I would like to pay for a card of that power. It performs about as well as an R7 370, so if you're looking at Pitcairn GPUs, you can get them going all the way back to the 7870 for like 40 bucks. And I did have an option to pick that up as well. But being that I wanted to make this build current gen, I wanted to go for something, of course, current. Now, as for where I got this card, interesting story. Somebody was at my house making a purchase. I was selling a full system that I had built for a certain price, and they said, well, listen, sir, I don't have that certain price in cash, but what I can do is give you a portion of it in cash and give you the rest in Best Buy gift cards plus some in Best Buy gift cards. And I thought to myself, what could Best Buy possibly have 
that I would want to purchase. And then I realized that they did sell the odd core component here and there, and this graphics card was actually one of them. So the total value of the gift cards he gave me were $150, and this came to $159 after tax and shipping, which is of course is absurd, uh, but considering the cash that he gave me from that sale, more than paid for the computer that I was selling, uh, you can call this free, but of course that would be disingenuous. But I don't think it would be fair to call it $159 either, because there's no way in hell I would have paid $159 in cash for this. So I think instead what we'll do is we'll call this 90 bucks, which is exactly what I would have paid for that RX 460 that I had waiting for me and I was about to go pick up after I made the sale, but when those Best Buy gift cards were waved in my face and I calculated the cost associated with going to get that instead, this became the better option. Next up we have the power supply, and the power supply, as you can see, is a gray box. Uh, it's a no-name power supply. Uh, these are great. You should always use these because they're just fantastic. And actually, no, that's that. That's You shouldn't do that. You should always make sure that you're aware of who makes these things, of course. And uh, I'm actually hiding one of the sides from you because this is the important side here. This is the side that will tell you that this is a Seasonic unit, an SS-350ET, which is a fantastic low wattage unit. 350 watts sustained output, 80 plus bronze certified, and I got this little bad boy for 10 bucks. And I actually picked up five of them in one trip, which is absolutely fantastic. And these were bought with a certain job in mind. With, with graphics cards like this in existence right now, with no external power, delivering this amount of graphical output, I figured it was time to make an investment uh, for the long term and get myself some power supplies that can be paired appropriately to power cards like that and systems like this. And that's exactly what this one is going to be used for today. As for storage, since this build is not exactly a high powered build, we're gonna to stick to a single SSD with 180 gigabytes of storage. Uh, it's an Intel 520 series SSD, does a job, uh, and will give you enough space to store operating system plus whatever games you have been playing at the time. And that is pretty much it for all the components. So I'm gonna plop this here on my bench and let's get started. Now another note about this power supply I wanna make aware to most of you is that it only has a four pin connector. It doesn't have a four plus four P4 connector. Being that that motherboard has a eight pin socket and this is a four pin connector, you would think that would be a problem. But for those of you who are not aware, most of the time you can run CPU power off of just a four pin, even if the motherboard accommodates for more. That is there because the anticipation is that you're gonna use a higher powered CPU in that board, uh, but we are not, so we're in good shape here. The person who upgrades the system in the future might need to invest in something else. But really, realistically, if you're not overclocking, usually this is fine, even with an i7, just for the record. Let's get this fucker in there without breaking anything. Power supply should go in first when working with the SRM01, by the way. It's a bit of a bitch. There it goes. Screw that in. All right, next step, IO shield. Heavily important component. Oh, the SRM01 is really solidly built, especially most of the back pin. So it doesn't give you a lot of flex back here. You've got to be like really rough with it. Oh, I see it on one side. Oh, God damn it. What? Oh, oh, Jesus. Okay. All right, time to get rough with it. Fuck you. Here come the meat and potatoes. Oh, zippity zippity bop. Get in there. Get in there. Stop screwing around. You screw around too much. Looking for motherboard screws. They try to fix them at least. Okay, we'll start with just three. This ain't the motherboard screws. No, but that's no settle down. That's a different threading entirely. This is a motherboard screw? Must be. It's the tighter threading. I, I forget what they're actually called, to be honest. I've been in the business a long time, and I have just never learned a lot of the terminology. It goes to show you, I mean, like, I know that a lot of these YouTube channels, they have a certain degree of polish to them, but I guarantee you every one of those motherfucking enthusiasts who has a channel with 500,000 subscribers is looking shit up on Google all the time. They're just like, God, what's that called again? I don't know what that's called. Jim, what's that called? I don't know. You know what I really like about this power supply, by the way? I just wanted to point this out. I don't like it that both of them has it, but the, the, the ends of the SATA chains here, we've got two chains, two chains, ha! Huh? And the end connectors, the ones on the very end here, uh, are both parallel to the wire. I guess, not perpendicular to the wires. I would prefer that I see one of each. And I know it's a small thing, but I wish power supply makers uh, would do that. So you would have one that's at a 90 degree angle, or, or if you have three chains actually, put one that's at a 90 degree angle up, one that's at a 90 degree angle down, and one that's straight like this. Because the reason why I like having straight ones is that if you're gonna bottom mount an SSD, like I just did down here, I don't know if you can see it, uh, it's a lot easier to slide that power connector in like so. E e e bend, you bitch, bend, bend! Yeah, it's mostly in. I wish you guys could see better. Sorry, maybe I'll move in a little bit. Does that help? You can see more of my dick. Uh... 
uh, pretty tight up there with that one hole in the back. All right, found an old perfectly functional 120 millimeter Cooler Master fan that I think we're gonna throw in the front of this thing, which I accidentally configured as a front exhaust. What the fuck is my problem? Okay, now that I have all the excess cables tied down on the front side at the very least, it is now time to install the graphics card. Come to Papa, you big motherfucker. Okay, it's time for B-roll with techno music. Ready? <laughs> There you have it, there's the finished product, that's what she looks like. Now let's go plug it in and plug in my capture card and see if we can't get some game footage out of this thing. Okay, I'm gonna make this part of the video short because we're already 10 plus minutes into it and I don't really have a lot of modern games to test anyways, so we're just gonna do a couple. Shadow of Mordor, predictably very high settings, gives us a 44 minimum and a 61 average. Obviously you can throttle that uh, up or down by reducing or lowering the settings. Totally expected here. It is a slightly older game. 1050 performs about equally well to a GTX 960, just to give you some perspective. So this is right about where it should lie. The Witcher 3, on the other hand, is a more curious case. Now, you would think that a last-gen mid-range card like the GTX 960 or the present 1050 would actually do just fine with a game like The Witcher 3, which itself is coming up on two years old now. But we had some problems on low settings. So with everything turned all the way down, I was able to maintain an average 60 frames per second but as you can see here I'm not exactly in Novigrad so uh, it's hard to say how it would perform in the tougher scenes certainly would be playable I can't expect that it would drop that much and you can up these settings a bit and still have the frame rates playable I was running at about 45 to 50 on the medium preset so depends on what you're really aiming for here but I expected better long story short it really looks like developers are leveraging all of that horsepower that Nvidia is building into their cards because games are are becoming more graphically intense. Now, whether or not it's paying off in visuals is a whole other story. I think Shadow of Mordor and The Witcher 3 look very similar in terms of their quality. But the bottom line is we had positive, playable results on both titles. A system like this is going to be upgradable, obviously, and it will give you just enough horsepower to get by in the meantime until you gather a bit more cash to pump into this thing for the long term. But I will note, of course, the power supply is only 350 watts, so if you're going to upgrade that graphics card to something that requires external power, you're going to need to replace that too. So exactly how much money did we save over new alternatives the g4560 obviously is the competitor cpu it's actually a little slower than the i3 6100 and it would have costed us about 25 dollars more after taxes but not shipping being that i have amazon prime i'm not going to count that now the gtx 1050 is a little harder to measure of course because of all the shit i went through to get it but let's say i got the rx 460 instead and i paid the 90 dollars and then i were to go out and buy a brand new rx 460 i would still be paying paying about $35 to $40 more for it after taxes, no shipping included, to get the same card. So even if I had went with that RX 460 and gotten that level of performance, I still would have saved $45. So if you look at just the core components, we're talking about what looks to be around $70 in savings over retail, but that doesn't count all the peripheral stuff, which you can happily buy used and have a very fulfilled and prolonged experience. The power supply, we saved a ton of money on a $10 Seasonic unit. It's nothing that you're ever going to be able to match at retail. The case was bought at retail. Now the RAM, of course, is a mixed bag. We did get a stick of RAM for considerably cheaper than we would have paid for something that was new, DDR4, but we are sacrificing a bit of performance, although it's probably not going to affect us all that much in gaming. Higher speed RAM is definitely proven to be valuable nowadays, but it only seems to be the case when it's paired with like an i7 7700K and some sort of uh, batshit insane graphics card. Mid-range stuff, all tests that I've seen show that RAM speed doesn't really matter all that much. And of course the storage we got for half price, that's a given. But all in all, even if you just count that 70 bucks that we saved on the core components alone, and you still went out and bought everything else new, that's still $70 that's well worth saving just by making a quick search on Kijiji and seeing if you can nab something comparable for significantly less money. Anyhow, I promised you guys a midweek Q&A video this week. That was supposed to be my first video of the week. And this was supposed to be my second, usually scheduled for the Saturday. But I had to put the first one on hold because on Wednesday, I actually uh, got the flu, uh, all the chills, the muscle aches, and then eventually the diarrhea and the vomitiness. I didn't actually puke. I was I was smart enough not to eat. I guess that that's a smart thing to do, but I was certainly pooping nothing but what looked like black coffee every 20 minutes for the last two days. And I only felt well enough to film today, here on Friday, to finish this video off, which is exactly what I'm doing right now. And hell, once again, thank you very much for watching, despite all my disgustingness. Hope you enjoyed this one. See you next time.